and like steps off completely. He has measured it scientifically to know that he will reach the board at his maximum speed. Can't do that when the wind is in your face. And this is the inconsistent wind that uh, Carl talked about. Uh, he doesn't like it this way, and so Carl Lewis fouls. He does not like the wind conditions, which change dramatically as you... A headwind, slight headwind for Carl Lewis here. It's in the field events are very sensitive to the wind. The pole vaulters, the high jumpers, and the long jumpers often will wait on the... And that was a good one. His speed was very good early on, but his steps were off because the wind was in his face again. And when he took off, he was clearly behind the board. He reached concentration on his face. At the same time, he's very relaxed. You could see he stuttered his step just before he took off. It really and uh, the 8.06 in meters translates. It's a Mondo rubberized surface. Here he comes. great jump that's the sign of a jump and this was beautiful well it is perfection when you look at Lewis on the runway everything in control the motion forward he's a great sprinter who right there turns into a great long jumper the double hitch kick out per hour speed on the runway when he gets close he shortens his step and then reaches for the sky he looks back you can see his head slightly back his legs fall forward he throws his arms back and then he goes 28 8 and a half inches 28 8 and a half inches for all about speed on the runway being converted into horizontal not vertical distance you don't want to go way high up in the air you want to use that speed and then as you take off there he's on the board but just uh, just on it you want to use your horizontal speed to stretch out as he changed he's tried to adjust you can see he shortened his last step there and then reached out for eight meters eight foot leap for Carl About being someone who controls himself in the air like a sprinter shortened his step there and then reached out very well right there you see him stamp his foot down to shorten and then he jumps well and there it is 8.75 28 eight and a half inches so terrific jump towards the board the board is only eight inches wide and we'll see here he actually goes behind the board so he's losing eight inches immediately on his jump then you got to run bit at the end takes off behind the board and then stretches out well 28 five and three quarters inches so that stood for 20 final attempt by Carl Lewis speed for each of those jumps but I tell you, when he got to the board, he was all aggression. He, again, was behind the board. Looked like he lost at least a foot. Had to and 28, five and three quarters inches for Carl Lewis. That was meaning to try to catch Carl. It's in a little bit of perspective. You know, only seven men in history have broken 28 feet in a long jump. Carl's now done it five times in this one competition. Still a great competition, but neither he nor us are obviously satisfied with the fact that he didn't break the record. Medal establishing a Pan American Games record in the long jump, although he did not break Bob Beeman's record, which has lasted 19 years and still going. And right now, down on the infield is Carl Lewis with Irv Cross. Irv? Well, Carl Chris, the hot day for sure. I mean, you worked very hard. But you're all muscle. <laughs> you set the Pan Am record today but you didn't get the world record you wanted uh, was that a disappointment for you yeah Irv you know I felt that I could have jumped a little bit farther but as you know the wind conditions are still pretty tough um the, the nice thing about it is that everybody came here and they were very supportive I won the Pan Am gold and I still have some other needs to try to get that record I just saw you give a pair of shoes away to a couple of youngsters here why well you know I like to share a little bit of moment the people were very nice to me today so I can get a million pairs, but those kids can't get them, so I'm happy to give them away. <laughs> well, could you tell when you walked into the stadium today that conditions were right or not right for a world record effort? Well, when I walked in, the wind was very swirly like it was yesterday. But um, jumping yesterday helped me jump farther today because I was able to gauge it a little bit better. 
But um, after the relay, I was very tired because I ran a hard leg there, and I wasn't able to recover like I wanted to. You had some difficulty getting your steps together. Even though you had some good jumps, you weren't quite on the board the way you wanted to. Why? Well, just like I said, the wind conditions were still difficult. The problem we were having is that the wind would blow at our backs at the beginning of the run, and then blow at our face at the board or vice versa. So it makes it difficult, but everybody was able to get in one good jump at least, and I was glad that Larry was able to jump 28 because he deserves it. And I, and I still almost jumped the personal best, so it ended up working out well. Now, your coach told me yesterday, he said, you know, world records don't come when you predict it. They come when you least expect it. Right. Now, did you feel that you, could still have, you still had a shot at it today? I did, Irv. You know, I really did. And after the 228-foot-8 jump, I really felt I was certain I had an opportunity. But, you know, things just didn't work out. And um, I don't think I'm down yet. It just makes it more suspenseful. Hey, I'm not getting old yet. I can still do it. <laughs> Keep rooting. Don't give up on me. Oh, no one's giving up on you. But, but uh, you yeah. know, how do you can, what, what, What's your timetable, though, from here, though, Carl? Uh, the, the World Games, you know, are coming up at the end of the right. month. But what else is in your timetable? You're busy doing so many things. Yeah, well, I'm supposed to shoot another film in the fall and then finish working on the album in the fall. And then next year, I'm going to clear all that out so I can concentrate on um, running again. Um, I don't plan to retire for at least a couple of years. So the next two years, I'm going to concentrate even more on that record. Um, I did more than last year, and I was closer, so um, we can get it next, sooner or later. Well, you still have jumped over 28 feet more than anybody in the history of track and field, and we loved every jump. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you. So, Dick. All right, Irv, thank you very much. We had six jumps of 28 feet or more, five of